and today we're going to talk about what I feel to be the most important aspect of making sure that your patterned dichroic jewelry comes out as perfect as possible and that has to do with firing schedules. Uh, before we talk about uh, the firing schedule guidelines I'd like to address a subject that's uh, of uh, importance when it comes to fusing pattern dichro uh, especially and that's that uh, the dichro and the glass at a certain temperature range uh, well the dichro tends to want to separate from the glass and that happens in the 900 to 1200 degree Fahrenheit range so it's very important that the temperature goes through those ranges quickly get up to the tack fuse phase where it's gluing the dichro right down to the glass. If you go too slowly through the, the 900 to 1200 degree range, here's an example of what can happen. Okay, so let's start talking about the firing schedule. Here it is. I want to reiterate that this firing schedule is for small dichroic jewelry pieces, a quarter inch thick or less. That uh, equates to six millimeters. Uh, the ramp should be uh, as quickly as possible. 1500 degrees per hour or more is uh, certainly uh, permissible and even faster if your, your kiln will do it. Because it's very important to get through that 900 to 1200 degree range as quickly as possible as we talk, just got through talking about. Obviously going up to temperature, there's going to be a difference between 90 COE and 96 COE glass. As you can see from the, the chart here, uh, I like to fuse and I recommend you fuse your uh, smaller pieces of 90 COE at 1425. Um, 96, a little softer glass, it uh, typically fuses at about a 25 degree lower temperature, so if you're using 96, I recommend 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you get the temperature for either 90 or 96, typically you would want to hold it there for 5 to 10 minutes uh, to get to a full fuse, and if that's the case, then, then your parameter is adjusted uh, fairly accurately. If you get to one of the those levels and you've either blobbed out, you're not nearly fused enough, then you need to go in and make adjustments and this is where knowing your kiln comes in handy. If you find at the end of your fusing cycle you need to make some adjustments, um, I would start by adjusting the amount of time first and if you can't get to where you need to be with that then and go ahead and start adjusting your temperature. So to review, uh, basically the, the two guidelines are number one, get to your fusing temperature as quickly as possible and number two, fuse at the lowest temperature possible. So lower longer, not higher faster. And the side benefit of this is it gives you a great deal of control uh, over how the, your finished piece is going to, to look. As you can tell by looking at some of these examples that we have out here on the table, what I want you to note is two things. Not only the, the brilliant color of the dichro, but also look at the lines of the pieces. They're all perfectly straight. None of this stuff has been cold worked. So, follow these few simple guidelines and it's going to greatly enhance uh, the, the beauty of your dichroic jewelry. Thank you.